Moving on to the grooving cycle. Here we see a screenshot of the grooving cycle itself. Notice that we now have three tabs instead of just the two. We have the process tab for strategy, the geometry tab to describe the finished product of the, of the groove itself. And then if this particular groove happens in sequence or there's more than just one that we're cutting, then we have a screen for patterns as well. The information that is contained here on the grooving screen, on the process tab of the grooving screen, is really not any different. We just begin to uh, walk through the tooling information, the offset information, um, speeds, feeds, so forth, retract clearances, <clears throat> very similar to what we've seen in some of the other blocks, the strategy, rough, and finish. Um, you want to just rough and finish, you just want to rough it, you want to only finish it, so forth. Sequence is one that confuses people from time to time, so I've highlighted that here in the screen. And you'll notice that the soft keys on the right, F4 through F7, explain what those options are. 2-1, two, 2-4, two, 2-4 two, to 1, so forth. Notice on the little image in the green box there of the of the groove itself, it has a number in each one of the corners. The 1 to 4 means it's going to cut in along the 1 2 side of the thread, or excuse me, of the groove, pick up, move over, plunge in at from the 4 to 3 side of the thread, and then it would go back to finish that going from 1, move over move down to the two corner, move over to three, come back up and finish it in such a manner. The two four to one is going to be the reverse of that. It's going to go from the four side to the one side. And the from one to four is going to cut it uh, more of a U-shaped groove. So that just describes the, the sequence that's going to be used here. I also want to point out, while I have it here, notice the little plus that is next to the one. That only denotes, when we get to the geometry side, which side of the groove that we are programming to when we talk about Z values. We'll talk about that in the next screen. Here's the geometry screen. Again, the orientation is this an outside, an inside, or a face type groove. What is the starting diameter? In this case, you want to put the actual diameter where it's going to contact material. If I were to be cutting a three inch, on a three inch part, if I had put three inches and 20 thousandths in there, for example, and then tried to, when we get to the corner information at the bottom, tried to put a 20 thou break on the corner or a chamfer, there would be nothing to cut because it would actually be thinking it was cutting 20 thousandths above the material. So when you put a diameter in for the groove cycle, make sure it's exactly the diameter where it will contact material. Now the Z star, negative four inches. Again, notice the little plus sign on the one corner. That tells me that I am programming to that particular Z location when I put mm -hmm. my four inches in. It does not go to the leading edge of the insert, it goes to the back side of the insert. The width of the groove then would be from that corner or the one, two side of the groove over towards the four, three side of the groove by whatever's here in the groove width. The X bottom diameter is, we started at three inches. In this case, this would have been um, a cutoff cycle because it's moving all the way down to the zero. That's my final depth, or my final diameter is X zero. Now we have the taper, which is just to the right there of the X bottom. You have taper one, two, and four, three. If one of those sides of the groove had a taper to them, then I would put that value. In the example here we see a value of 45. That means from one corner one to corner two we're going to to get start out at four inches in Z start at the corner one but then we're going to move down at a 45 degree angle to corner two. I could also do the same thing on this, the side that is marked four three if I needed to. Next we see the corner type. We can either leave them square, doing nothing to prepare the corners. Again, notice each corner is numbered. Or we can select between uh, chamfer or radius. 
and I could put a chamfer on the two, the one and four, and then put radiuses at the bottom of three and two that would be um, interpolated by the tool. <clears throat> so we have some inf a lot of uh, choices there that we can that we can set up. Here's an example of the patterns. Um, as I said, maybe you have this this particular groove that you just programmed is occurring more often than just once. So it wants to know how many times and from the location, is it positive or negative? From that first one, do I offset? So if I did one towards the front of the part, I wanted four of those, I put four including the original one, and then it would be every 200 thousandths positive or 200 thousandths negative. Groove tool setup, again, very similar to what we've seen. You just go into the tool setup. We're going to select grooving as the type of tool. Enter the information. Do notice, however, that we can do turning with a groove tool. We can use a groove, uh, like an ISCAR cut grip, some type of, of groove turn tool. So we want to call the orientation the same as a turning tool. It would be the same as a boring bar for an ID um, grooving tool, for example. That's going to determine the uh, orientation of the tool in the control, for the control. Next you see the, uh, the little graphic there for the width and length of the, of the um, insert itself. The 0.312 for the length is not as important. It does need to be longer than whatever depth that you're trying to use this tool in but again that's only for graphics and it's not as detrimental to get the uh, put one inch in there for example if the tool is only 300 thousandths long it's only for graphics it's not going to be causing you problems like it would with the threading tool the width of course has to be accurate so does the corner radius is because that's how it's going to calculate from your z start using the groove width how to get you the correct size groove that you want now calibrated corner. If the corner that the orientation is pointing to is one, it's going to assume that this tool is a an OD or I guess for an ID case would be an ID groove tool, but it's going to be in the in a vertical orientation. If we go to corner two, notice what happens. I've got a little uh, a pop-out box here that shows that. It's then thinking that the calibrated corner or the corner you're touching off to is corner two, therefore the only solution to that is this must be a face groove um, type of tool. And that's how it will be used in the graphics. <clears throat>